Got an E93 and need to see behind you? Beamer Tech has your back. This E93 came in to get a rear view camera MMI. This kit will add a rear view camera to where you would find one from the factory and install an interface on top of your head unit to allow you to view the camera feed right on your iDrive display. While this kit does allow you to see what's behind you, what we really recommend is upgrading to our next kit up, which would be our wireless CarPlay and Android Auto MMI Prime with rear view camera. Well, of course, with this kit, it's going to come with a rear view camera, but so much more. With the addition of the MMI Prime, you get access to all of your favorite apps right on your iDrive display via either CarPlay or Android Auto. You can also watch videos on your iDrive display and have access to screen mirroring with supported devices. It really is the best version of this kit to get and installation is pretty much the same. However, if you don't have any use for Apple CarPlay or Google's Android Auto, well, then this Rearview MMI is the perfect kit for you. You're only going to need a few tools for this installation, and all of them can be found in our Beamer Tech DIY Essentials Toolkit and Trim Tools. Don't have one of these? Head over to our website and get yours today. Now that you know about these products, let's get to Jarrett showing you how to install this rearview camera MMI on this E93. Jarrett, take it away. Let's start by getting the camera installed and cables run, which will involve removing a bit of trim from the back. Start with removing the trunk floor panel. Now let's start removing some of the trim on the right side of the car. Start by removing the three fasteners on the trim here and setting the trim aside. Next, remove this second piece of trim by pulling. There are no fasteners, but you will have to rotate one of these retaining lockers 90 degrees to remove the panel. For this side trim, start by removing this access panel by rotating this retainer 90 degrees and lifting it out. Pull out this corner trim. You'll probably have something here holding it in. Next, rotate and remove these three black retainers and these two gray ones. To make things a bit easier, you might also want to remove this cover plate by using your trim tool to pop out the two fasteners holding it down. After that, remove the side panel. Rotate and remove the retainers on the battery cover panel and remove the panel. Remove these two fasteners in the upper side trim and remove it. For this rear trim, remove the three fasteners holding it down. You don't need to remove the panel, but you do need to get it loose enough to feed the lead from the rear view camera under it. You may also find it helpful to remove this plastic cover for a little extra room during the install. Now we can move to the front of the car to begin the destruction. I mean, removal of trim there. Start with this door sill trim. Simply lift it up with your hands. It may be tight. If any of the clips stay behind, use a trim tool to pop them out and place them back in the trim for reinstallation later. Next, remove anything you may need to get access to the rear seat area. Remove the lower portion of the rear seat on the passenger side by pulling up on it and articulating it out. Remove this side bolster section. It could be tight, so lowering the rear seats and using a large trim tool can help. Let's start running cable. First, feed a large cable tie through the opening. You'll see it poke through the other side. Now, tape the extension cable end that will connect to the camera to the cable tie and pull it through. Once out, remove the tape, connect the second extension cable, and now the cable is set for the next step, which is installing the camera. We need to remove the trunk panel cover. Start by using a trim tool to pop out the light and then disconnect it. And now a bunch of fasteners and parts. The fasteners on each end cap, the ones across the top, all the other ones, the emergency release handle, the interior handle, which you will need a 4mm hex key bit on your ratchet or a 4mm allen key to remove the two bolts on, and the last two things would be the shocks. Find something to support the weight of the trunk. We used the light stand that we had. Next, take a thin screwdriver and insert it under the retaining tab on the top of the shock. Once the tab is lifted, you can pop the shock out of its socket. 
Once they are both disconnected, remove the carpet panel and the end caps. Be mindful of the trunk, it's pretty heavy. Now for the actual camera installation. First, use the longest screwdriver possible to remove the license plate. Next, Jarrett decided to tape off the area around the handle to avoid marring the paint. If it's your car, you could do what you'd like. After that, use a trim tool to pry out the old handle and disconnect it. Plug in the next handle with the camera built in. Feed the camera lead into the trunk and snap it into place. Let's start securing the cable. Take what you've pulled from the inside of the car and run it along this existing harness near the battery and feed it behind this mechanism. Make sure you have enough to follow this existing cable loom all the way up to the camera. You could run the cable all the way first, but Jarrett was confident and started using cable ties to secure the camera lead to the existing harness and looms in the BMW. You can do this portion as you choose, but make sure you follow the same path and make sure you secure the lead when you're done. You don't want any of this becoming loose and getting caught up in the convertible top or trunk. When it comes to this rubber loom, you can go through it for a cleaner install or outside of it. If you choose to go through it, pop the bottom end off and remove the retaining clip on the top side by pulling the tab. Please use a better tool and don't do what Jared did. Next, tape the lead to a smaller cable tie and feed it through. Once through, re-secure the loom. Continue to run the cable. Plug it into the camera and tidy up any slack. Alright, let's get back into the car. Secure the cable onto this harness and then down under the panel. Oh, don't forget this clip that will go back into the bolster trim you took out. Continue feeding the cable under the panel and behind the carpet. We now need to remove the footwell panel. Remove the T20 screws holding it in place. Then. Drop it down, disconnect the light, and remove it. With the cable ready to be fed to its final position, we have to install the interface that the cable will connect to, which will live on top of the head unit. Start by using a trim tool to carefully pry up on and remove the upper trim. You will need to remove the connector to the start stop button, which you could do just by pulling. To remove the connectors for the center buttons, it's easiest to pop the buttons out, then use a pick tool to help persuade the connectors out. Continue to pry out the trim and remove it. Remove the climate controls by pulling the panel out, then disconnecting the two connectors by pressing the center tab and rotating the arms, and the last one by pressing in the side tabs and pulling. Now that we have the space, feed a large cable tie down through to the footwell of the car. At this point, continue feeding the camera lead through the car, under this trim, behind the carpet, then tape the end to the cable tie you fed down and pull it through. Next, tape the IR cable to the cable tie and feed that through as well connector side through the top. Make sure the receiver end of this cable is visible under the side kick panel trim to be able to access with the included remote later should you need to. Jarrett decided to get a jump start on cable management. Oh, 
Now we need to remove the screen. Start by removing the two T10 screws at the top. Then tilt the screen out and remove the two connectors. Lift the one out and press in the tab of the video cable and pull it out. This video cable needs to go into the back of the rearview camera MMI. Since it's way too annoying to have to feed the factory cable back down, carefully pull up on the cable and pull it down like so, so we could go above the head unit. Now let's run the BeamerTech video cable. Get one end near where the screen will go and the other end where the MMI will be. It may help to tape one end to a cable tie and feed it down around the plastic frame of the dashboard. Now take the BeamerTech power adapter harness and plug it into the BMW power connector for the screen. The BeamerTech harness branches off into two parts. One half will go to the screen and the other half to the main power harness for the MMI. Jarrett already has the two harnesses plugged in together. Once connected, take the other end of the harness to the cable tie and feed it through like you did the video cable. At this point, the screen can be reinstalled. Plug the BeamerTech power harness adapter into the back of the screen. Then plug the BeamerTech video cable into the screen. Make sure the cables are out of the way and then push the screen back in place and screw it back in. Time to plug in the rear view camera interface. Plug in the BMW video cable into LVDS in. Plug in the AV in out cables from your kit. While you have the cable handy, plug in the rear camera feed into rear on the AV in out harness. Secure the connection with tape if you choose to. Plug in the other end of the camera connector into the rear jack of the MMI. Plug in the power harness. Plug in the IR cable. Tuck all the cables into the back. Slide in the MMI. And end with plugging in the BeamerTech video cable into LCD out. Don't forget to check to make sure your dip switches are in the correct position for your setup. Consult the PDF instructions you were given to find out what they are. Now plug the climate control section back in. For the connectors with the arms, make sure the arm is all the way down, then put the connector in place and rotate the arm up to lock it into place. Press the panel back in place. Place the upper trim back in place. Don't forget to reattach the start button and center button cluster, which Jarrett did after making sure the connectors were accessible and pressing the trim down in place. Replace the footwell panel. Remember the light connector and two screws. Press back in the door sill trim. Make sure all the clips are in place on the trim. If you find that you have any broken, you can order our repair kit, which includes new fasteners specifically for your BMW. Reinstall the side bolster. Then the base of the rear seat. Take your time to work them both in place. Replace the deck lid panel trim. Start by feeding the hydraulics in. Then press them in. Then snap the retaining clip down. Don't forget the trunk release handle. All the fasteners. the inner handle, and the two 4mm hex screws. Snap back in the end caps and reinstall the fasteners. Reinstall all of the inner side trim panels that you took off before. There's nothing overly complicated about it aside from some perhaps stubborn fasteners, but just go the opposite way you did from everything you took out and you'll be fine.
Once you put the floor panel back in, you'll know you're done. Take off the protective film off the... Take the... <laughs> Remove... Denied. Jarrett. Take the film off the... Damn it. <laughs> watch your head, watch your head, watch your head. <laughs> this is so difficult. Apparently it is. You use the tool and your nail to do it, or your tool and your finger. I'm yes, Jazz, that could work. I'm trying to make it look a little seamless though. Cool, do that. There you go. Yeah. I almost let go of it. <sighs> Once that debacle is done, close your trunk, start your car, and put it in reverse to see your work pay off. Note the parking assist lines to help you get through those tight spots. And that is how you install a rear view MMI kit on your E93 BMW. Want this for your BMW? Head on over to our website and enter your VIN to get the right kit for you. Don't have the tools to install it? Well then make sure you pick up our DIY Essentials Kit and Trim Tool Kit while you're at it. Now if you don't feel comfortable installing this yourself, we have installers in about 30 countries around the world, so head on over to our website to find one near you. And hey, if you're in the Orlando, Florida area, well then we can do it for you. Now keep in mind that our support does not stop after you've purchased your product. Our world-class support team is only a phone call away during and after the installation. For more product reviews, tips and tricks, and so much more for BMWs, Minis, and Supras, make sure you subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell. And hey, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok as well. Thanks for watching.